Good morning, Slay You, Slay You families. Hope that you're doing well wherever you are, whenever you watch this video. Now, I'm just going to cut to the chase on this one. This, these stories we've been discussing in church, whew, they're difficult. And this one may be one of the most difficult of all because it's about wealth. Now, nobody wants to be poor, right? No one chooses that. We as human beings, our basic instinct is survival. To have food, to have clothes, to have a house, to have all of the things that we need to survive and to thrive. That's what we do. And there's nothing wrong with having our basic needs met, right? But most of us that are watching this video, we would be what's called wealthy. I mean, we have to be honest. If we're born in America, we are wealthy in comparison to most of the human beings who live on this planet currently and most of the human beings who have ever existed. And in our story today in Mark 10, Jesus meets a young man who has a lot of money. Now, it doesn't say how he got the money, but he asked this question of Jesus, how can he inherit eternal life? It's obvious this young man has sort of come to this realization that money isn't everything and that there's something else missing from his life. So he goes to Jesus and he asks Jesus this question. And Jesus tells him, do you follow all the rules? Honor your father and mother, don't steal, stuff from the Ten Commandments that you're supposed to do as a good person. And he even has this little subtle hint about not defrauding people. You see, this guy has a lot of money, so did he get it from some sort of nefarious means or did he get it legitimately? And the young man answers, I've done everything. I've done all these things from the time I was little. And Jesus looks at him and the scripture says he loved this young man and he said, you're missing one thing. Sell all of your stuff, give it to the poor and follow me. And one quick thing to note here, Jesus doesn't say, sell everything you have and give it to me. This is not some sort of cash grab by the preacher trying to get someone to give him money. Jesus says, sell your money and give to the poor. You see, the thing he's missing is following Jesus. He has followed all the rules and he has all the money, but he hasn't followed Jesus. And Jesus realizes that in order to follow Jesus on the way, as the passage begins, which will lead to suffering and crucifixion and death, but also resurrection, you have to give up all of these possessions because you can't follow Jesus down the road if you're grasping on to all of these possessions. And so he wants to set this young man free from all of the things that he's obsessed with. You see, Jesus asks this young man to give away his wealth, not just because it will benefit the poor, but because he knows that this man is enslaved to his possessions and that giving them away will set him free. It's not just about helping others, it's about freeing ourselves. And the young man refuses to do so. And Jesus points out it would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a wealthy person to enter the kingdom of heaven. And that's a tough saying. And Jesus tells us later that with God, it is possible. Now, why did Jesus tell this story and what does it mean to us today? Well, I'm gonna break it down in a way that's very uncomfortable, even for me. But I think is the truth of this that we can't dodge. We can't spiritualize this too much because it really is about wealth and about how wealth can be something that chokes out our spiritual lives. I know that's hard to think about, but it's true. Because the average human being who's just going through life, money and the pursuit of money is something that they're constantly thinking about. And for some people, that's a necessity of survival. But for many of us, it's simply, what is the next thing I can get? What's the next pair of shoes I can buy? What's the next pair of nice clothes I can have? What's the next video game I can own? What's the next thing I can have? And Jesus tells us you can't serve God and wealth at the same time. And this is why I think he tells us that because we can't focus on what it means to follow Christ in our day-to-day -day lives if we're constantly thinking about our money. We only have enough processing space in our brains to think about a certain number of things. And our brains are full of a lot of things already with school and our 
athletic commitments and our extracurricular activities and all the stuff that we're doing. And if we add on to that, this pursuit of money as the goal of life, we're going to miss what it means to follow Jesus. We're going to miss what it means to care for others, to give our lives in service of the kingdom, which ultimately leads us to not just eternal life in the future, but to an abundant life now. We live so much more abundantly when we care for others around us than when we're just thinking about ourselves and our wealth. And that's a hard pill to swallow. I get that. But I think this passage is trying to give us that. It's trying to tell us that this is difficult. It's trying to tell us that this is not easy. But if we allow God to work on us, to change our perspective, we can do it. We can learn to follow Jesus. And it requires us letting go of gains in the material life, of that being the focus of our lives. It's okay to have a great job and make a lot of money But what is the focus of your life? Is it to enjoy that job and use that money for good? Or is it just to attain more so that you can look at your bank account and think that you're better than everyone else? I mean, these are the the choices that this young man is having to face. And while that may not be a choice that we have to face now as teenagers, it's a choice that we're already beginning to make as we start to learn how to deal with money, as we start to learn how to manage our finances, as we start thinking about what do we pursue in life? How do we pursue Jesus through our career, through our choice of college, through the classes we take, through all of the things that Jesus asks us to do to follow him fully? Are we doing that or are we not? It's a hard conversation to have to our, with ourselves But this story holds up a mirror to us and asks us to take a look and see where we are. And if we pray to God, if we love God, if we ask him to open our hearts, he will do so. And we will learn how to follow Jesus more and more each day. Thank you for watching today. Hope that you are blessed. Know that you are loved. We will see all of you soon.